So I'd like to talk about map projections now. This is a key step that we do when we're getting data from our curved spherical coordinates to our flat Cartesian coordinates. Remember, we work in this flat Cartesian surface. We use a map projection to go from the curved to the flat coordinate system, and the projections always introduce distortion. We just can't avoid when we stretch that curved surface onto a flat surface, bending or stretching or changing the shape, area, and direction on our map. Now we manage this distortion, we keep it at acceptable levels by choosing different kinds of projections and by limiting the area over which we apply that projection. If we're working with a big area, statewide or larger, we're going to have to distort more than when we're working with a small area. There's just no way around it. Usually when we're working with large areas though, the error relatively stays managed. I got to a point on continental levels where it, the error is just huge and we usually don't do analysis for calculating areas on continental levels. So there are many common standard projections in any one region. There's a limited set. For example, the UTM coordinate system is defined around the world, but the zone for Minnesota, zone 15, is the commonly used UTM zone for statewide data. There are state plane or county coordinate systems also that are standard and well-defined, so there's relatively few you typically have to work with. Finally, datums are related to projections, because remember, datums are, are agreed upon locations in the geographic space, and so when we project from the geographic space into our Cartesian system, we're coming from a specific datum. If we project from different datums into the same system, we're going to get different positions for our features. So we get uh, a shift if we have one datum versus another, even if we have the exact same projection. So we have to be careful to have both the datum and the projection matching when we combine data in analysis. Again, in summary, there's these two views of the world. There's this, uh, this flat map version, this square, green square here, that we lay on top of the globe. And that flat map has a Cartesian coordinate system, a right angle coordinate system that's more or less oriented towards the north, usually, and the east-west directions. And all the lines intersect at right angles where they intersect. So they're parallel in one direction, let's say the north-south, and those never intersect, but they intersect the east-west ones always at right angles. Well, how do we get this from a curved surface? We do a mathematical placement and unwinding projecting from one surface to another. So here you see in the upper left corner a globe with a triangular cone seen from the side laid on top of that globe. And so if we were to cut it through the middle and look at it, you'd see here's the eventual map surface we're going to get, and here's points on the globe. And we project from the globe onto the surface. Now, sometimes it's a downward projection, and sometimes it's an upward or outward projection. But we're basically saying, okay, on this line, whatever maps here, I'm going to put down on a line, in this case, that goes through the center of the globe out onto the surface. So this point on the globe gets pushed out to this location this point on the globe gets pushed down to this location. So I map the surface. Now mathematically, I'll have my lat long grid might look something like this. And so I have to cut this and unroll it and then expand it. And you can see where the distortion comes in. So these features that are close to themselves here get spread out. Now this is highly exaggerated in terms of the kinds of error that we usually use for GIS data. We don't get this much distortion, but this is a doubling in length in the top here. So you can see where the distortion comes in this mathematical projection. Now there are different projections, and like political parties, they distort everything in a different way. So here is Greenland, and this is a view from space, of course rendered on a flat surface, but this is approximately what it would look like if you were in a spacecraft way the heck up above Greenland, so you see its shape. Now, one common map projection, the Mercator projection, really flattens and expands Greenland, makes it look nothing like what it is approximately on the surface of the Earth. Another common projection fixes that somewhat, but an optimized projection 
is pretty close to what Greenland looks like. So in Greenland, if we were interested in getting something approximating two areas or distances or directions, we would use this projection, which gives the best rendering. And why does this one occur? It's because we might have a global map, and for the middle part of the globe, we might get a much better fit. The distortion just happens to be worse up here where we have Greenland. So you can see again that these projections have certain parameters. This is called a Lambert conformal conic. It's a conic because it's a cone. It's conformal because it restricts errors in a certain way. And Lambert was the person that thought it up, so he got it named for himself. These projections often have standard parallels or standard lines of intersections. So they'll have basically key latitudes here where they intersect the cone with the sphere and a top and a bottom and then they'll distort in different ways around this surface. Distortion is always lowest near the line of intersection and essentially zero on the line of intersection. I can plot circles and it shows the size of the distortion here on this expanded map and so you can see there's a point here in the middle between the intersection where the distortion is smaller than up at the top or down at the bottom. So the distortion is worse, to answer my question here, where is the worstest? The further away you get from the lines of intersection, in this case the standard parallels. There's another common kind of projection we do. It's called a transverse cylindrical or a cylindrical projection where we have, rather than a cone, a cylinder, and the cylinder intersect, intersects along a single line or along two lines. In this case, it's a central meridian. It's just a single line. This is a transverse mercator because the cylinder is turned on its side or transverse. And we basically then project from the sphere onto the cylinder, then unroll the cylinder. And again, we can get these circles that show the level of distortion. Here's the central meridian. And the further away you get from the central meridian, the line of intersection, the greater the distortion gets. Now, um, which of these is best for an east, west, or north, south direction? So is the Lambert conformal conic best for the east, west, or north, south? Um, and the same thing, which is best for east, west, north, south here? Since our guiding principle is to minimize distortion, if we have an area we're mapping in a north-south direction, and we want distortion to be the least, we want as much of that area as possible close to this line of intersection because distortion increases away from it. So for a long north-south feature like California or Illinois, we want to intersect this line and use a transverse mercator, intersect the line in the middle of our area of interest. If we have long east-west, we want to use this Lambert conformal conic and intersect bracketing our area of interest to study. So you can see here that there's always distortion. Here's Again, a side view of an intersecting surface and the globe that we're using, the ellipsoid. And inside the bulge here on these two edges where there's intersection, we're compressing everything. So we have this length, and that's compressed to a shorter length. So we're getting compression here. Out here, we're getting expansion, right? These things are getting pushed further apart. The distance between little d and little e is much bigger than between d and e. But right around here, we have the least distortion, right? What we typically do is narrow these intersection points by pushing this surface up so that we have a relatively manageable level of distortion in the intervening area. And as you get outside too far away, the distortion gets too big. Right. We can plot this, so here's the circle of intersection. Think of the plane as basically flat and below us coming across. Here's where it intersects. Here's above and here's below. And so this stuff is getting compressed down, and so you're getting a half a percent reduction or a 1% scalar. Things are, distances are 1% less here than at the edge because they're compressed. Same thing as you go exterior, there's that, that expansion, so we're getting a 1% increase plus error, or 2%. Here, distances are 2% longer when scaled on the map than they are on the Earth. So distortion is greatest further away and smallest 
near the center here, near the intersection. So where the lines intersect. And if I wanted to really maintain a really high error standard, I could make this circle very small, like basically getting most of Iowa, and then keep the scale error less than a quarter of a percent or a tenth of a percent. We have standard projections that we've established that place first and second standard parallels or that define the kind of projection so that within a zone we have a limited number of a limited amount of error, limited size. For example, in the state plane system here, there are three zones in Minnesota with defined first and standard parallels for cones, the conic projection. And everywhere in this zone, the projection distortion is less than one part in 10,000. Now we need three of them because as you get to the edge and get bigger and bigger, there's just, the distortion gets big enough that you can't do anything about it. It's You're too far away from the line of intersection. So we create a second zone and a third zone for three in total. So this state plane system does that. We'll talk more about that in a bit. The county, state plane, and UTM are three common coordinate systems here in Minnesota. And why do we have so many? Well, we want to keep distortion to acceptable levels. When we're working on very high quality, very accurate data in cities, we typically use a county coordinate system because those are only defined for within the county and those standard parallels or central meridians intersect in the county. And so we're never very far from our line of intersection, so our projection distortion is small. For bigger areas, you know, county level areas, we use the state plane or multi-county areas. And for statewide, we use something like the UTM. So the distortion goes up with each, but each of them manages the distortion. So over the intended area of analysis, it's about as good as it can get. If you used a county coordinate system for Ramsey County down in the central part of the state, central east, for the entire state, by the time you got up to Kuchichin County or, or down to Olmstead County, the distortion would just be too great. You wouldn't be able to use it for really high quality measurements. You want to go to a county system or a UTM system. So we want to manage the distortion at acceptable levels. The UTM system defines a uh, central meridian and is good for big north-south area, area <clears throat> areas and it has this false easting at the equator that's um, half a million meters to the west of my central meridian and then you measure how many meters north and how many meters east of that origin so there's a central meridian that's six degrees wide and then outside of that there's this false easting and then you measure north from there now, why do we set a false easting? We, it's because we don't want any negative coordinates. We want all our co coordinates to be positive. And as it's at its widest here, it's less than half a million meters to get to the outer edge. So we have a zone 11 coordinates, and will be zone 10 coordinates and zone 12 coordinates where the central meridian gets moved over. But the definition is otherwise the same. You go half a million meters to the west to set your origin you're measuring up and to the side. So this UTM system, it's common for statewide data and they have lots of zones. So zone 15 is what we usually use here in Minnesota. And you get these big numbers for the northings and not as big for the eastings. Some states are just in trouble like Wisconsin for many reasons. Um, because the state, I'm sorry, the, the UTM zone really splits in two. So Wisconsin uses a UTM-like system. It's defined the same with all the similar parameters as the UTM. So it's a transverse mercator. But it shifts the zone three degrees so you get the whole state inside that state um, zone. The whole state's inside the UTM zone. So um, other states don't do that. Michigan just uses the um, zone 16 for more, most of their data. There's a second common set of coordinate projections that we use, it's the state plane system. Most of the states have defined enough zones so that they have less than one in 10,000 distortion area error within the zone. So if I go 10,000 feet, it's only gonna introduce a foot of error. So for about every two miles, it'll introduce a foot of distortion error. And so some states like California have six zones, and these are east-west because that's the easiest way to get this number of zones 
the state split up, split up into state plane zones. All these east-west zones are Lambert and formal conic. Then there are north-south zones, like Missouri splits itself into three north-south zones. These are different transverse mercator, and they're different mainly in where the central meridian lies. Now I can project from one to another zone. I have the parameters, and so we do this through software that does the mathematical inversion, which I'll talk about in a bit. Now in the state plane system, some states, they don't bother with zones, so North Carolina or Tennessee or Montana or Nebraska. These, you can get pretty close to that one part in 10,000 with one zone because they're such long east-west states. So they say, ah, close enough. Other states like Montana or Nebraska, they just don't seem to care. Most of the people live in a few areas. They use a local coordinate system, and they don't work with statewide data that much, right? It's common for multi-county or single-county data. And again, each of the zones has these lines of intersection, either vertically or horizontally, and place so that in the zone you have acceptable levels of distortion. Um, so basically, that one part in 10,000 is what drives our, our selection of new zones. So what's the distortion? We sort of want to get to the distortion. We have this horizontal line in our projected projected system and this curved line on the surface of the Earth. And so if we survey across the surface of the Earth, this distance is going to be different, greater than this distance. And so we have to determine how much extra we're adding so we don't get a wrong answer. We can calculate for any uh, projection the amount of distortion by using the great circle distance calculation we talked about earlier in chapter two and in earlier lectures. And the Cartesian projected coordinate distance. So remember the Cartesian is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. So we square those, sum them, and take the square root of them, and that gives us the Cartesian distance. But remember, there's that great circle calculation distance, which approximates the distance along the curved surface of the Earth. So here for a point, we calculate both in a particular coordinate system. So I have the latitude and longitude, and I use this formula. And I find that it's 412 0.681 kilometers from these two points, point A to B. If I project that and then pull the Cartesian coordinates that correspond to these latitudes and longitudes, so when I project them to a state plane, I'm getting an X and Y. I can, again, for those, pull them and get the X minus X, A minus X, B squared, plus Y minus Y, B squared, and I'll square root that. That's 412.864. So there's about 183 meter lengthening from Baton Rouge, Louise, Baton Rouge, Louisiana to Houston, Texas. And that's not very far. So 300 meters, those are adjacent states. Um, and Texas is big, but that's not even halfway across Texas from Louisiana. So you're getting a significant amount of distortion at this sort of statewide level. If that's too much for me, I would have to figure out, well, can I do a special projection? Can I use a different projection? Now in Minnesota, we have a set of county coordinate systems. Some are in the Lambert conformal conic, some are in the transverse Mercator set, and some in the oblique Mercator. Think about why some would be Lambert conformal conic and why some would be transverse Mercator. Why wouldn't they all just use one? And there's a min.website website that keeps the standard formula, the standard descriptions for all our projections, including these county systems. Now we can do a simple projection example to show that these projections are all mathematical renderings forward and backwards. When you come out with a projection, you specify how to go from the coordinates in a latitude longitude system into a Cartesian system in XY, and then also the inverse, how to go from the XY into the geographics. That means I can take any points on the globe, get their latitude longitude coordinates, their geographic coordinates and run them through this projection engine, this set of formulas, and it gives me an x. And if I do the next point, it gives me another x, and they're next to each other as they should be. They have the same relative position, just on a flat surface. 
So this Mercator projection is pretty easy. The x values is just the radius to the center of the Earth times the lambda minus lambda zero, or the longitude minus a base longitude. <clears throat> the y value is the radius of the Earth times the natural log of the inverse tan. I'm sorry, the natural log of the tangent of 45 degrees plus whatever the latitude is over two. So r is the radius of the sphere, and lambda zero is the longitude of origin. In this case, the Greenwich meridian. So if I have a latitude of 30 and a longitude of 45, and I run that through the formula. These are the numbers I get. 11,047 would be the x, and 3,503 would be the y. And I could go through that for every coordinate pair, every geographic latitude and longitude to get its, its um, coordinates in the Cartesian system, in this case, the, trans, the regular Mercator, not the transverse Mercator. Someone sent me data for my study and, I, and they don't know the coordinate system or they gave me a coordinate system that isn't right. So when I overlay it on my data using the coordinate system they gave me, um, it doesn't match. So how do I find out what it is? If you know the area you're working in, you can go to the standard coordinates that are used there, the standard coordinate systems. So I could assign it the Hennepin County Parks and see if that fits. Assign it the... Um, the Hennepin County data system, because I got it from Hennepin County Parks. Well, no, that doesn't fit. Well, then I would try the state plane central zone for Minnesota, because that's where Hennepin County lies. Well, it still doesn't fit. Well, then I tried the UTM zone 15. Oh, that fits. So it must have been given to me in UTM zone 15. I'd be surprised at the number of times the data get delivered in the wrong coordinate system or it gets lost along the way. Um, so it's Good to be familiar with the common coordinate systems in an area. Okay. Now, a map projection is not a datum transformation. A datum transformation goes from one geographic coordinate system to another, like from the NAD83 1986 to the NAD83 2011, or from the ITRF 2008 to the NAD83 CORS 96. So I'm going that three dimensional transformation. Map projections go from the 3D surface, the curved surface of the globe, onto a flat 2D surface. Right? So if we don't have the exact same datum and the exact same projection for data sets, we don't expect them to line up. Changing one projection to another may require us to also do a datum transformation. If we had a target set of data and a layer we want to match that's in a different datum and a different coordinate system, I have to both do the datum transformation and the projection to get into that system. So sometimes I don't have that. I'm using the same datum, this NAD83 1986 in both the input and output. One is zone 15, the other is Iowa State Plains. I'm working in Iowa. I got some statewide data, but I want to combine it with some data in my county. So I have to project this from the NAD83 UTM zone 15 north coordinates to the NAD83 Iowa State Plain north. I run it through that engine that gives me first the inverse to latitude and longitude from the UTM to the latitude and longitude, and then from the latitude and longitude to the state plane coordinate system. So that's why when you define a coordinate system, you don't know, sometimes you're coming into it, sometimes you're going out of it, but you have to define how you go mathematically from one system to another, and these are completely invertible. If I go from this state plane to geographic and then back to state plane in yet another projection, the data will line up perfectly on top of each other. Sometimes you're combining data in different datums, and so you have to go from the projected coordinate system, in this case the UTM zone 15, back project to the NAD83, and then you add a datum transformation to the NAD27, and then do a projection. Now, you'd never want to do this, or really want to do this, go back to an older one. Usually the move is forward, but if that's what you wanted to do, by inserting a datum transformation inside the projection, I can get my data into the right system, right? So I want to use state pro projection for Oka, North Dakota. Which one should I use? Well, you know, we look at North Dakota, kind of get split. I could use this UTM-14 zone, and it would cover most of the state, and the error is going to be bigger as I go west here, but it's for statewide data about as good as I can get without a customized projection. 
only web projection statewide for working Wisconsin, which would I use? Well, you can use either UTM zone, but as I said earlier, US Wisconsin goes and defines this WTM with the central meridian through the center of the state where the junction would be, and then they convert their data into that from a lat long system and have converted, have shown how to convert data from the lat long. Well, both directions, lat long to system and system to lat long. So um, I can switch, right? Okay, Mac projection summary. Remember, projections specify a two dimensional coordinate system from a three dimensional. I'm going from that curved Earth surface onto a flat map surface. All projections have some distortion, but we manage that distortion by choosing both proper form and areas or lines of intersection of that um, projection with my area of interest. There are standard sets at the county, state, and um, sub-county area that I would want to use. And so I can go to them and know my distortion within a standard set of levels by using those standard defined projections. Furthermore, those projections are supported by most software. So if I get my data into those projections, I can project them out into other projections if I want. Remember, you have to have the same datum and the same projection exactly if you expect your data to line up. If they're in the same projection but different datums, you might expect a lot of them to not line up. And certainly if they're in different projections, even for the same area, they might not even overlap at all. You might not be able to see one from the other. So you have to have the same projection, the same datum to use your data together.